What's up, guys, and welcome to Differential Equations. Bernoulli equation is one of the well known nonlinear differential equations of the first order. In the previous lesson, we solved first order linear differential equations. Now, in this lesson, we're going to solve nonlinear differential equations using the linear method by substitution. We're going to learn how to solve nonlinear DEs using Bernoulli equation. But first, our gospel thought. Matthew 18.21 says, Then Peter came to him and asked, Lord, how often should I forgive someone who sins against me? Seven times? No, not seven times, Jesus replied, but 70 times seven. There is nothing more difficult than dealing with someone who has treated you wrongly. Perhaps someone laughed at you or at what you said or what you wore at school. Maybe someone didn't do what you wanted them to do. The normal thing to do in situations like this is to get back at them. You might want to teach them a lesson or treat them like they treated you. However, today's Bible verse challenges us to do something different. It challenges us to not only forgive someone, but to keep forgiving them. That means they might keep doing the same thing to you, and you are to keep forgiving them. Forgiving someone like that might seem impossible to do. That's why Jesus gave us what we needed to solve, or rather to love and forgive others. The Bible talks about how God's love has been placed in our hearts by the Holy Spirit, Romans 5.5. 5. So when Jesus tells us in this verse that we are to forgive and keep forgiving, it's not something that is impossible for us to do. We can do this because He gave us the love we need to do it. We just have to choose to let that love flow out of us. As Lasallians, may we respond in prayer. I will continue, O oh my God, to do all my actions for the love of the St. John Baptist de La Salle. Pray for us. Live Jesus in our hearts forever. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, let us define what a Bernoulli equation is. A Bernoulli equation is a first order equation that can be written in the form dy over dx plus p of xy equals u of x y raised to n, where p of x and q of x are of course continuous in the, on, the, on an interval a to b and n is a real number. This is what we call actually as a Bernoulli equation. Ngayon, alam nyo ba that this equation was proposed for solution by James Bernoulli in, in 1695? It was solved by his brother John Bernoulli. Now, James and John, alam nyo ba, were just two of eight mathematicians in the Bernoulli family. Napakatalinong pamilya, no? Now, let us consider this equation. This seems familiar, right? This is familiar because this is actually almost the same as the linear differential equation form. You will notice, you will notice that this equation is linear. If n, where is our n here? Yun yung ating nasa dulo. Here, our n here, if n is equal to 0, it can be solved by variable separable, no? Uh, sorry, if n is equal to 0, the equation is linear, right? Because y raised to 0 is simply 1. And so we're left with dy over dx plus p of x, y is equal to q of x, which is what? Our linear differential equation form. Now, if y, or rather n here, is equal to 1, it now becomes separable. Now, the Bernoulli equation is applied. Kailan? When n is not equal to 0 and when n is not equal to 1. In other words, from 2 onwards, this equation can be used to solve differential equations. 
Now, for other values of n, we do a substitution. Okay? Alam nyo ba that in 19, or rather in 1696, just a year ahead of its publication by Bernoulli, um, the co-inventor of calculus, Gottfried Leibniz, showed that the Bernoulli equation can be reduced to a linear equation by making the substitution as can be seen on the screen. And what is that substitution? By making a substitution of letting v equals y raised to 1 minus n. Mahikita natin yan later as we expand. And of course, taking the derivative of this function, if this will become v prime or dv over dx equals quantity 1 minus n, y raised to n, dy over dx, right? Product rule or power rule. Yeah, in the chain rule. Now, this clearly you know, transforms the Bernoulli equation into a linear equation. Let's follow through. No? Let's take a look. Now, how are these transformed? No? Bernoulli equations can be transformed into a linear equation by first multiplying y raised to negative n. Paano? If we have this whole equation, we call this the Bernoulli equation, right? If we multiply the whole equation by y raised to negative n, what happens? Yan, ito yung mangyayari. If you multiply y raised to n to the whole equation, we distribute it here. This will become, yes, multiply to the derivative and then p of x, y, that term. And then the y raised to n here cancels out, right? And so we're left with this, okay? Now what's next? Now, if we let v equals y raised to 1 minus n and uh, take its derivative, the derivative of v, dv over dx, and that is, yun nga kaninang ating pinakita na substitution, 1 minus n multiplied, quantity 1 minus n multiplied to y raised to negative n, dy over dx. Now, solving this or rearranging this no, in terms of dy over dx, we're actually going to get dy over dx equals y raised to n over 1 minus n multiplied by dv over dx. So, going back dun sa ating equation kanina, where we multiplied y raised to negative n to the whole equation, substituting these values, no, we're gonna get these values. So, y raised to n, we know that dy over dx is equivalent to this expression in terms of v. So, we have y raised to n over 1 minus 10 and then dv over dx, right? And we have, of course, v here, no? because that is equivalent to y raised to 1 minus n, which is this one, right? So all in terms of v now. Now, if we multiply um, or expand this further, no? we multiply, we see here that y raised to negative n and y raised to n cancels out. No? So ang matitira na lang sa atin ay 1 over 1 minus n and then dv over dx, ito yon. So what happened to 1 minus x? It was multiplied, or rather, yeah, multiplied to the whole equation. So canceling this one, no? para ang matira ay dv over dx. Now, when we multiplied 1 minus x, of course, it was distributed to the whole equation. It was multiplied to p of x, this term here. So p of x, uh, 1 minus n, and then v. And then, of course, 1 minus n as well on the right-hand side. Now, going back, this is the same equation as before. Now, this equation here clearly is a linear equation of order 1 in standard form, right? Hence, any Bernoulli equation can be solved with the aid of foregoing changes of the variables, unless, of course, n is equal to 1, when there is no substitution needed because magiging variable separable nga siya, as mentioned earlier. Thus, the solution, recall that the solution of a linear differential equation can now be written as, yan. Naalala pa natin yung ating linear differential equation. Yung form niya is y mu of x equals mu of, integral of mu of x and then q of x dx plus c. Okay? So in this case, if we substitute um, v of x for y, or rather uh, looking at this whole equation up here, um, and um, comparing it with a linear differential equation form, then if the solution is y mu of x equals the integral of mu of x, mu of x dx plus c, then uh, we can apply that same principle here. So hence, ito na yung ating equivalent. The solution 
for this form. Yeah, for this form right here. So, now in terms of x and y, if we're going to bring it back, no? Kasi kanina, naka -term, naka, uh, in terms of v pa, we substitute it back. So, we have v equals y raised to 1 minus n. Kapapansin natin, there is now an addition, similar, almost similar to the linear differential equation form. Solution, general solution for it. Ang difference lang is, merong y raised to 1 minus n. And then may 1 minus n din dito. Right? Where, of course, yung ating integrating factor, mu of x, equals e, the integral of, ayun, merong additional din, 1 minus n, p of x dx. So, anong difference ng Bernoulli sa linear? Basically, merong 1 minus n si Bernoulli. Now, to generalize, no? Here, are uh, my recommended steps in solving Bernoulli, which is similar uh, from what we did sa ating linear differential equation. First, we write the standard form. Ito yun. No? Ang difference sa linear is may y raised to n lang siya. Okay? Next, after getting the standard form, or, um, well, yes, arranging the equation so that it fits the standard form, we move on to Calculate the integrating factor, right? And the integrating factor, as already derived earlier, is e raised to the integral of 1 minus n p of x. Ayun. So, difference na din pagdating sa linear differential equation is that meron siyang 1 minus n. Now, after getting the integrating factor, you apply the general solution. Again, this is now uh, a derived general solution, ha? So... If you want to see the derivation, please visit uh, Lesson 7 where we derived the general solution. Kasi ang ginagawa na lang natin dito, we are applying these steps no, in solving the DE because we have alright, uh, already um, derived the form of the general solution para plug-in, plug-in na lang ang mga components or parts of the general solution. Alright. So to further appreciate this, let's go straight to our sample problems. Okay, so we have number one. Number one. So we have here dy over dx equals oops, dy over dx dy over dx minus 5y equals negative 2.5 xy cubed. Okay, so solution. Let's write it here. Okay, so for our first step, we get the standard form, right? Standard form for Bernoulli is dy over dx plus p of x, same lang din sa linear, y equals q of x, eto na yung iba, pagkakaiba niya, y raised to n. Ayan. So from our given equation, no? If we um, look closely, we'll identify that this uh, equation is dy over dx, right? Plus, you negative 5, and then y equals negative 2.5x, and then y raised to 3. Ayan, mas maliwanag. Because in this form, we can identify that P of x is equal to negative 5, right? And Q of x is negative 2.5x. Mm -hmm. Now, n is clearly 3 here. So, this is 3. So, sulat na rin natin, no? Para later plug and play na lang. 1 minus n equals 1 minus 3, minus 3 and that will be negative 2. Okay, yeah. Next, we proceed to our next step, which is getting the correct integrating factor. So, in the integrating factor is 
mu of x equals e raised to the integral of, yes, meron na tayong 1 minus n, then p of x, then dx. Now, we will disregard plus c for now because we will represent the arbitrary constant at the end later, pagkakuha ng general solution. So, plugging in all our values, nakuha na natin si p of x, this is p of x, right? Si 1 minus n, nakuha na rin natin, ito yon. So, plugging in, we're gonna get um, e, the integral of 1 minus n, that's negative 2. And then p of x, that's negative 5. And of course, dx. Yeah, can clearly be seen that this is e raised to um, 10 integral of dx. And so, mu of x here is equal to e raised to 10x. Ayun. All right. We now move forward and solve for the general solution. So the general solution is what? It's actually y raised to 1 minus n mu of x equals integral of mu of x 1 minus n and then q of x dx, of course, not forgetting plus c. So plugging in all our values, we're going to get y raised to 1 minus n. Nakuha na natin siya kanina. It's negative 2, right? And then mu of x is e raised to 10x equals the integral of mu of x. That's e raised to 10x. And then 1 minus n is actually negative 2. And then q of x is, yun, negative 2.5. Kuha na natin siya kanina, x. Kaya di ba, mas madali siyang isolve kapag ka-identified mo na lahat. Kasi parang nga siyang sa pagluluto. Nakuha mo na lahat ng sangkap, yun, lulutuin mo na lang. So, further simplifying, itong ating integral sa loob, um, magkakaroon tayo ng negative 2. No? Negative 2 times negative 2.5, this is actually 5. So we can bring out 5 here because it's a constant. And we're going to get x e raised to 10x dx well, plus c. Okay. Now, how do we integrate this factor here or this function here? If we u du, parang hindi po pwede because um, if we let u to be um, e u du kasi yun, so hindi po pwede. Um, this actually can be solved hindi rin pwede by trigonometric identity, lalo hindi by partial fraction decomposition dahil hindi naman siya fraction. This can actually be solved by means of correct integration by parts. So let's do that. Let's integrate it. Okay, so by IBP, we have the integral of u dv equals u v minus v du, right? Integral of. Now, in choosing u, naalala pa natin, we actually have our priority for that. It's a convention, uh, or rather, um, not actually a, a standard, but rather a preference. No? preference. So, um, L stands for logarithmic, I stands for inverse trigonometric, A stands for algebraic, T for trigonometric, and then last or the least of our priorities in choosing U, U, this U, no? is exponential. So in other words, since meron tayong two choices here, x and e to the 10x, ito yung least natin na kukunin for u. 
In other words, kukunin natin si x. Ouch. So let u be equal to x and let um, dv be equal to e to the 10x dx. Ayun. So getting the derivative is dx. And of course, integrating this right here will give us e u du. And that gives us e to the 10x over 10. Okay. Of course, disregarding plus si muna. And so, magsamasamahin natin ng mga sangkap, magkakaroon tayo ng uh, sagot na uv minus v du. So, ilagay natin. Integral of u dv uv minus v du is actually equivalent to yan. Our uv is x and then e to the 10x over 10 of course minus the integral of v du v and then du so magkakaroon tayo ng Integral of, pwede natin ilabas si 10, 1 over 10, integral of, e to the 10x, dx. So further simplifying or um, evaluating the integral, we're gonna get x e to the 10x all over 10 minus 1 over 10 e to the 10x all over 10, e u du. Yeah. So, plugging it back here, we're going to get equals 5 no, x e raised to 10x all over 10 minus e raised to 10x all over 100. And then plus c. And of course, Copying this, we'll have y raised to negative 2, then e raised to 10x. Yan. Now we can further expand this. No? Magkakaroon tayo ng um, 5 over 10 is 2, right? 1 half. So we'll get x e raised to 10x all over 2 minus um, 5 over 100 is 20. So that's e raised to 10x over 20 plus c. Yeah. So if we multiply or if we divide e to the negative or e to the 10x here, the whole equation here, we divide e to the 10x here to the whole equation, we're going to get um, y raised to negative 2, um, x over 2 minus um, 1 over 20 plus c e raised to negative 10x. Okay. All right. Now, Solving this in terms of y or making an expression um, explicitly in terms of y. If you actually multiply this by y cubed, no? the whole equation. If you multiply this by y cubed, we'll have y equals xy cubed over 2 minus y cubed over 20 plus c y cubed e raised to negative 10x. Ayan. So there you have it. A solution in terms of y. Okay. Explicitly um, expressed. Okay.
Let's take a look at our next problem. We have example 2. So we have x dy over dx plus y equals x squared y squared. How do we identify a DE, you know? Um, how, uh, how do we identify the technique in solving the DE? Uh, separable ba siya? Homogenous, exact, non-exact, linear, or Bernoulli? Yung separable, homogenous, and linear are easy to detect. Right? Um, homogenous, dapat, of course, same yung degree ng mga terms. Dapat pag variable separable, of course, lahat ng x's on one side and all y's on one side. And of course, kung linear siya, you can easily notice and take note by looking at the dependent variable. In our example, y is our dependent variable. This is a nonlinear equation, clearly because meron tayong y squared sa dulo. Right? So definitely, tanggal na yung linear doon. Hindi mo nang pwedeng magamit yon. Now, this one is not homogeneous because x squared and y squared has a degree of 4 and then yung nasa uh, left-hand side mo is um, x and then y single lang sila so hindi po pwede. Hindi rin naman sila separable because if you move out x and y, uh, if you manipulate the equation, you will uh, end up with a mixture of x and y. So you can't really separate them. So the next thing is we... Uh, actually, you can look at exact or non-exact, right? But I recommend that you see to it first if it is uh, if it is Bernoulli, kung hindi siya linear, okay? Kasi, um, well, as I will demonstrate on the next problem, mas madali siyang solve by means of Bernoulli than exact, dahil ang haba ng, uh, ng non-exact pala, ang haba ng solution ng non-exact. Or exact. Siyempre, you have to test it first. If it is exact, if it is not exact, you have to multiply an integrating factor. And then yun, dun ka palang makakapag-solve ng DE mo. So in this case, this is clearly a nonlinear. So for example, nga, in scenario, I usually get messages a school book uh, of students messaging me, Sir, how do I solve or how do I identify the type of uh, technique I'm going to use in solving a differential equation? Kasi pagdating naman sa long quiz, we are given the choice uh, how we will be solving DE. Ayon. So, that's how you deal with it. You look at the form. Yun yung unang una. You look at it. No? And then you'll notice that if it is separable, homogeneous, if it is linear, that could easy, that can easily be uh, identified actually. No? Uh, yun nga. Uh, we look at the, the whole equation if it is linear or nonlinear. And that could be easily spotted. Yun. So obviously in this case, this is a nonlinear. So we can proceed with Bernoulli. So solution. Okay. So again, our first step is to transform this into the standard form. And that is dy over dx. Standard form natin for Bernoulli, dy over dx plus p of x y equals q of x, y raised to n. Looking at our differential equation, it is not yet expressed in the standard form. So let us manipulate the equation to conform with the standard form. So if we divide x to the whole equation, we're going to get dy, no, dy over dx plus 1 over x y equals x y squared. So again, ang ginawa natin, we divided x kasi katabi siya ng dy over dx ng ating derivative. Hindi pa siya expressed in standard form. So if we divide it to the whole equation, yan, magkakaroon tayo ng 1 over x, uh, y equals um, x y squared. So in this form, we can now um, clearly identify that p of x here equals 1 over x oops, 1 over x not 1 of her x no, but 1 over x Aruy. q of x is x here 
and n equals 2. This is n, right? Now, 1 minus n is obviously 1 minus 2, and that is negative 1. Yeah. We can now proceed to our next step, which is the integrating factor. And that is mu of x equals e raised to the integral of, correct, 1 minus n, p of x, of course, dx. So plugging in our values, we're going to get e raised to the integral of 1 minus n, that's negative 1. And we have p of x, which is 1 over x. The p of x, that's e1 minus n. Of course, dx. So this is equivalent to negative 1 or negative e to the integral of dx over x. And we know this dx over x to be, yes, ln x. e raised to negative ln x. Now, since we're a negative number here, by uh, loss of logarithm, no, this negative one here could be a power of x here. In other words, e raised to ln x raised to negative 1. Now, we know e and ln here um, cancels out. So we have mu of x equals e raised to, I'm sorry, x raised to negative 1. And this is our mu of x. So let's proceed. To getting our general solution. So our general solution is y raised to 1 minus n mu of x equals integral of mu of x 1 minus n q of x dx of course plus c yeah so substituting um, our values y raised to 1 minus n we know 1 minus n as um, negative 2 right Negative 2 nga ba? Or negative 1? Negative 1! Okay. So negative 1. That would be y raised to negative 1 multiplied to x raised to negative 1. Yan. Equals the integral natin, which is, of course, x raised to negative 1. Then 1 minus n, which is negative 1. And then q of x, what's our q of x? Our q of x is x na lang. Tama? And then dx, and then plus c. Yeah. So we can see here that x cancels out because x raised to negative 1 multiplied by x raised to 1. That would be... Um, negative 1 plus 1, that would be equal to 0. So x raised to 0 is 1. So we're left with the integral of dx. So we can uh, factor out negative 1, then dx, and then plus c, right? So we're going to get, of course, negative x plus c. So bringing this down, we have y raised to negative 1, and then x raised to negative 1. Now, if you multiply x squared to the whole equation and y squared as well, I'm sorry, um, x, if we multiply x to the whole equation para mapunta tong x natin, yan, yung mga x na yan, dapat sa kabila na yan. yan. So that we could express um, an expression explicitly in terms of y. We're gonna get... Um, Okay, so say natin. Y raised to negative 1 equals multiplying x to the whole equation. No? Sige, sulat ko na para makita nyo. Kakaroon tayo ng negative x squared plus cx, of course. Now, if you multiply y squared to the whole equation, 
so that we could express um, a solution in terms of um, y we're actually going to get y equals negative x squared y squared plus c x y squared and that ladies and gentlemen is our yes solution for this problem dali lang di ba kasi similar siya sa linear now bakit pa ako nagmultiply ng y squared here pwede na ba itong sagot na ito pwede na ba itong sagot na ito actually yes but of course para lang magandang tignan we express it in terms of y in your quizzes you will be asked to express it either implicitly or explicitly in terms of let's say y or x or de depending upon the situation so in this case um we, if we can express it in terms of y explicitly then let's do so okay so negative x squared y squared plus cx y squared Problem number three, we have now an um, initial value problem. That's IVP, okay? Pag meron tayong condition, naalala pa, difference between IVP and BVP, an IVP is an initial value problem. Meron tayong condition that is y at x equal to 0 is equal to 2. So let's solve that. Solution. Okay, so we have an equation y prime equals 5y plus e to the negative 2x y negative 2. How do we know if a differential equation is, yun nga, as mentioned kanina, what to use? Obviously, this is not a linear, so we could try you know, Bernoulli. Very obvious naman, since our topic is Bernoulli, all of the problems we pre prepared are Bernoulli. But as mentioned kanina, uh, madaling ma-identify yung kung separable, homogeneous, uh, kung siya ay um, linear, yung tatlong yun. Because you could uh, actually see to it and compute a uh, little bit. We can identify that this is not homogeneous. This is not linear because of y raised to negative 2, right? And this is, I think, not separable because of e raised to negative 2x and then y raised to negative 2. Mahirap paghiwalay niyon. Okay. And then, naka-plus pa siya sa 5y. So, the only thing we're left, of course, is non-exact and then Bernoulli. So, my tip is that you first try solving it by Bernoulli or transforming it to the, its standard form. It, if it could be uh, transformed into the Bernoulli standard form, then, well, you're in luck. That could be easily solved. Okay, so y prime equals 5y plus e to the negative 2x, y raised to negative 2. How do we solve this? We have, let's transform this first now. Of course, our first step is st the standard form, which is dy over dx um, plus p of x, y equals q of x y raised to n okay so arranging our equation we have y prime and we know that y prime is dy over dx dy over dx and then we can put uh, 5y to the left hand side though so we transpose that we're gonna get plus negative 5 and then y equals you know, e to the negative 2x, y raised to negative 2. Ayan. In automatic na siyang ganyan, para mas madali yung makita, that it can be identified that p of x is equal to negative 5. And that um, q of x is e raised to negative 2x. Yeah, and that n is negative 2 and 1 minus n 
is of course three having that we can proceed with getting our integrating factor and that is mu of x equals e raised to the integral of 1 minus n p of x dx. We have p of x here, right? And we have 1 minus n here. So substituting our values, we're going to get um, e raised to the integral of 3. I can factor that out, 3. And then p of x, that's negative 5. Actually, sige, lagay ko na para hindi nakakalito sa inyo. 3. And then p of x is um, negative 5. Of course, dx. This becomes e raised to negative 15x. Okay lang. Snortcut ko na, ha? Yan. Now, Meron na tayong mu of x. This is our integrating factor. No? We can now proceed to solving or um, getting the general solution. And the general solution is y raised to 1 minus n mu of x equals um, the integral of mu of x 1 minus n q of x dx, of course, yung ating arbitrary constant, plus c. So, plugging in our values, we're gonna get um, y raised to 3, and then mu of x, of course, is e raised to negative 15x, equals the integral of e raised to negative 15x, 1 minus n, and that is 3. Q of x, what's our Q of x? It's e raised to negative 2x, correct? Yeah. Of course, dx plus c. Okay. So, evaluating our integral, Mm, 3 here is a constant that could be factored out. So 3, integral of. We have here e raised to negative 15x and e raised to negative 2x. They are both exponentials. No? And uh, since parehas naman sila ng um, power, negative, uh, same sila 15x, and, uh, sorry, since parehas sila ng base, rather, both e, then we can, by loss of logarithms, um, and they are multiplied, no? We can add them. So in other words, e raised to negative 15x plus negative 2x will give us e raised to, correct, negative 17x. dx. And then of course, plus c. Okay. Now, how do you evaluate e raised to negative 17x? Well, e u d u. So, kung meron tayong uh, 17, we need to, well, insert. Right? Naalala pa? u is equal to 17x. Actually, negative 17x. So, d u is equal to negative 17 dx. And dx is equal to, transforming this, no? du negative du all over 17. So, kailangan natin mag-insert ng negative 1 over 17. So, this becomes negative 3 over 17. E raised to negative 17x. Of course, plus C. Yeah, so bringing this down, we have Y cubed E, Y cubed E raised to negative 15X. Okay, 
we can expand this further. Um, dividing e raised to negative 15x to the whole equation. No. We're going to get y cubed equals um, negative 3 over 17. Um, magiging positive 15 divided here. Negative 17 plus 15x is negative 2. So e raised to negative 2x plus... C, e raised to 15x. Ayan. So, tapos na ba tayo dito? Actually, hindi pa. We can leave it as is muna for the moment because um, we can apply, you know, and we have to actually, <laughs> yung ating condition. And that is at y, y is equal to 2 when x is equal to 0. And then, of course, we solve for C. Okay. So, how do we solve this? Applying, no? We have um, 2 raised to 3 equals negative 3 over 17. E raised to 0. Negative 2 times 0. Plus C. Move Plus C, E raised to 0 then. Right? Now, we know E raised to 0 is simply 1. So, we're left with 8 equals negative 3 over 17 plus C. Hence, C is equal to 8 plus 3 over 17. We can plug that back. No? We can actually simplify for 8. We can use our calculator in simplifying this. Paano? We have 8 plus 3 over 17. No? Siyempre, gawain tamad. <laughs> And then, may calculator ka naman sa so gamitin mo. Yan, 139 over 17. So C equals one thirty nine over seventeen. Okay, so we plug that value we plug that value to our equation. No? And we're going to get y cubed equals negative 3 over 17 e raised to negative 2x plus yan, yung 139 over 17 e raised to 15x. And that, ladies and gentlemen, no, is our solution to that. Problem number to problem number three. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So example four. So solution. So, standard form, of course, that's our first step. And our standard form is dy over dx plus p of x y equals q of x y raised to n, right? We will notice na it's not it in the standard form, no? So, transforming our equation... We have dy over dx no? because that is equivalent to the y prime plus 
y over x. So that's actually 1 over x, right? Isolating yung 1 over x natin and then y equals, we can transfer um, that square root of y to the other side. And we're going to get y or square root of y, okay? Square root of y. And okay. So from here, we can identify p of t or p of x rather, p of x is clearly 1 over x, whereas q of x is actually 1, no? And n is 1 half. And 1 minus n is obviously negative 1 half. Okay. Now we proceed to our next step, and that is in acquiring our, our um, integrating factor. Our integrating factor is mu of x equals e raised to the integral of p of x dx, but with 1 minus n. Very good. Then dx. Okay, on. So, plugging in our values, we have e integral of 1 minus n, that's negative 1 half. And then p of x, that's 1 over x. And then dx, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, we can factor out 1 half. So e raised to negative 1 half. Integral of dx over x. Yeah, and this clearly is e raised to negative one half ln x. Okay, by properties of logarithms, we can transfer this coefficient of one half here, negative one half, to be a power of x. This becomes e raised to ln x raised to negative one half. Yeah, and we know that um, when ln is raised to e, that cancels out. So we have x raised to negative 1 half or 1 over square root of x. Bakit nasa ba yung square root of x? Kasi this is negative, right? Yan. Teka, teka. Mali pala dahil our... Hindi, hindi. Tama pala. Actually, mali nga because <laughs> 1 minus n is 1 minus 1 half. This should be positive 1, okay? 1 half rather. So, dapat, this should be positive 1 half. Okay. Tina lang nakita natin. This should be positive 1 half. So, this should not be negative. Oh, this should not be 1 over square root of x. Rather, it should be square root of x and it should not be negative yet miss lang natin para maliwanag 1 over 2 okay so now that we have acquired our integrating factor and that is um, square root of x we can proceed to getting our general solution okay the general solution is has the form y raised to 1 minus n, and then mu of x equals the integral of mu of x, 1 minus n, q of x, dx, and then plus c. Again, this equation, or the general solution, has already been derived no? uh, from our lesson 7. So we are here to simply apply that derivation. If you, and if you're interested to see how it was derived, you can refer to that previous video, video 7. Okay, so plugging in our values, we're going to get y raised to 1 minus n. That's 1 half. So y raised to 1 half. And then mu of x is square root of x. Right? And of course, the integral of 
um, u of x, that's um, square root of x again. Then 1 minus n is 1 half, right? And then q of x is um, q of x is 1. Yeah, yes. And then the x, of course. And then plus c. Tama ba? Or q of x is 1, right? Limutan ko na. Yeah, it's 1. Okay. All right. So, we can factor out, evaluating our integral, we can uh, bring out 1 half, right? And we have actually square root of x, which is x raised to 1 half, dx, and then of course plus c. So evaluating, we have x raised to 1 half, power rule, we have 1 half, and then 1 half plus 1, that's x raised to 1.5, or 3 over 2, over 1.5, and then plus c. Okay. So we have evaluating since uh, actually this is 3 over 2, no? Also equivalent to 3 over 2. So if we'll express this uh, this way, 3 over 2, 2 will cancel out here and we'll have x raised to 1.5 over 3. Then plus c, right? Then, of course, we have square root of y and then square root of x. But we're not yet done here because we have an we have a condition. And the condition is um, y, y, uh, at y of 0, at y, sorry, y is equal to 0 when x is equal to 0. Yeah. Let's just move, move this further back. We have at y at 1 is equal to 0. And then, of course, we solve for c. Okay. So, so square root of y is square root of 0, right? Square root of 0. Zero, that's y, no, square root of, and then another zero, square root of, equals x, which is one, raised to one point five, all over three, plus c, okay. So, solving for c. We know that 1 raised to 1.5 is also 1. So we have C equals negative 1 third. This 1.5 is 3 over 2. So uh, this 3 over 2 here is actually the, um, well, raised to 5. And you can, uh, if you want to verify that, you can actually use your calculator, no? <laughs> and raise that 1 to, to 1.5, and you'll get 1. So now that we have c is equal to 1, negative 1 third, we can now plug that in you know, to our general solution. So the particular solution, the particular solution now is um, square root of y, square root of x, equals x raised to 1.5 over 3 minus 1 third. Yon. So doon galing si 1 third. You can further simplify this no, in terms of um, y. You can multiply um, or divide square root of x here, and we'll get square root of y equals 
x raised to 1.5 over 3 raised to x raised to 0 0.5 minus 1 over 3 square root of x. So by algebra, we have We have uh, 1.5 minus 0.5 is 1. So this is equivalent to x over 3 minus 1 over 3 square root of x. Right? And then square root of y. Now, if we square both sides, raised to 2, we're going to get y equals. Um, Using this common denominator, we have 9 squared of x, 9 squared of x, and then we have 3x squared of x minus 3, and then raise to 3. I'm ah, sorry, 2. Yeah. So further simplifying, um, you can actually multiply 3x squared of x minus 3. Let's put it here so that's no. You can multiply actually 3x since it's squared no uh, raised to 2. 3x squared of x minus 3 and then 3x squared of x minus 3. No, you can multiply them. This is actually equivalent to 3x squared of x minus 3 squared and then yung numerator and then yung denominator as well. Yeah. If we multiply this, we're going to get 9, 9x, um, 9x cubed, no, x times, no, x squared, x cubed, minus um, 9, 3x squared of x. Actually, this is not cubed, but rather 1.5. Yeah, 1.5. Because x raised to x is raised to 1 and then square root of x is raised to 2. So x raised to 1 multiplied by x raised to 1 half will actually give you x raised to 1 plus 1 uh, 1 plus 0.5 is 1.5, right? Yeah. So 9 sorry, what is this? Um, yeah, 9x square root of x. Square root of x. So 1.5 times 1.5 is actually uh, 3. Yeah, tama pala. <laughs> sorry, sorry. It's 3. It's 3. Because, ano diba? Um, this will become 3x raised to 1.5. So if you multiply that with another 3, x raised to 1.5, then that will have 9, and then x raised to 1.5 plus 1.5, giving you 9 x raised to 3. Yon. Okay? Yon. So continuing, we have um, this 9 uh, x squared of x, and then 9 x squared of x will give us plus 9. So bring down 9x cubed minus 18x square root of x plus 9. Yeah, that is our equivalent. So 9x cubed minus 18x square root of x plus 9 all over the square root ng denominator, which is 9 squared is 9 times 9, 81. 81. And then if you square the square root, then it will become simply x, right? So we can further simplify this and actually get um, we can factor out nine from the numerator and the and the denominator. So nine, we have x cubed minus two x square root of x plus 1 all over we have 9 of course 
9x. So 9 cancels out here. And we are left with finally our final answer y equals x cubed minus 2x square root of x plus 1 all over 9x. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is our final solution. Okay. Yeah. All right. If you feel that this is fast or a bit uh, speedy, you may want to pause this and return back you know, and or adjust the speed setting. Let's move forward with our next problem. Okay, so we have problem number five. And we see here a very familiar differential equation. We see here that this equation is in the exact form. No? Yun na nga, yung sinasabi natin kanina. How do we solve a differential equation? How do we choose the proper technique in solving a differential equation? In this case, we are given a problem that looks like an exact. But how are we going to know if this is exact? Well, of course, we need to test for exactness. So, so it seems no, na siya ay exact. So let's go ahead and do that. For the sake of curiosity, let's try and solve this by means of exact. So solution. We can identify here no, um, that by exact mxy dy or dx plus n xy dy is equal to zero that m here is actually three x plus two y squared. Right, and n is 2xy. So, now that we have identified them, we must test if it really is exact, and that is test for exactness. So that's partial derivative of m with respect to y equals partial derivative of n with respect to x. So the partial derivative of m with respect to y is actually the derivative, no? With respect to y of 3x plus 2y squared. And that is, so taking the partial derivative, no? Uh, with respect to y, we treat all other variables as constants, so this is zero, plus 4y. So the partial derivative of n with respect to x is actually the derivative with respect to x of 2xy. And this clearly gives us 2y. Now, it is obvious that this is not exact. Right? So what do we do? We make it exact. <laughs> And how do we make it exact? That's the question. We introduce an integrating factor, you know? and that is we find out um, an integrating factor called mu of x. And how do we find that mu of x? Well, we have two conditions you know, that uh, we need to look at. First is if it is, if let's say a function, Epsilon of x equals the partial derivative of m with respect to y minus the partial derivative of n with respect to x all over n. No. All over n. If this is solely dependent on n, then the integrating factor is actually e raised to the integral of epsilon of x. Now we have already uh, derived this from our 
lesson 6 ng exact equations. The second condition, so if you're interested to know that, you can uh, visit the video again and know how it was derived. The second is, condition is psi y, and that is if the function partial derivative of n with respect to x minus the partial derivative of m with respect to y all over n is an, a function that is solely dependent on y, then the integrating factor mu of y equals e raised to the integral of psi psi y dy and so using these two conditions let us try and find out no, if condition one is met so at epsilon of x This will give me partial derivative of m with respect to y. We actually have uh, gotten that already. And that is um, 4y minus 2y. Partial derivative of m minus partial derivative of x. So 4 minus 2y all over n, which is 2xy. Okay, 4y minus 2y over 2xy. So that's 4y minus 2y all over 2xy. So this will give us 2y over 2xy, which is equivalent to 2, or rather y, or rather um, 1 over x. You want. So since this is an expression solely dependent on x. You can say that the condition has been met and therefore um, we can compute for the integrating factor that is mu of x equals e the integral of yon, 1 over x dx. So since d, this is dx over x, no? this is ln x e raised to ln x. So therefore, mu of x equals x. Yeah. Okay, so it's equal to x. Now that we have our integrating factor, we proceed to um, multiplying that integrating factor to the whole equation you know, to make the old equation an exact one. In other words, to get a new expression f nu or a new function we need to multiply mu of x to the old one which is f of x y in order for us to compute for the integrating factor or rather the well the solution so in this case meron tayong mu of x which is x Multiplied to what is our fxy? Yung nga yung kanina yung, yung given natin, which is 3x plus 2y squared dx plus 2xy. Yan, of course, dy equals 0. That's our function, right? So this becomes. Um, 3x squared plus 2x y squared dx plus 2x squared y dy equals 0. Yeah. Now, we can further verify this, no? Uh, and uh, go and test for exactness. You can do so, no? Uh, I'm leaving that uh, verification or checking on you. But um, I will proceed now to solving this, no? Via exact. So, 
solving the new equation f new we actually have to integrate our m mxy right dy our m dx and that is integrating our m here this is our m no and then with respect to x so that's tx squared plus 2xy squared dx this gives us um, you can factor out um, 3 hmm? and have x cubed over 3 plus factoring out 2 pi squared we have x squared over 2 so 3 and 2 cancels out hmm? and we have x cubed plus x squared y squared okay next is we can we can <coughs> integrate with respect to n <coughs> so integral of n x y dy will give us the integral of um, 2x squared y dy right so integrating or integrating this we have um, you can factor out 2x squared and we have y squared over 2 right which is so 2 cancels out yeah. and we have x squared y squared now we merge <coughs> excuse me we merge the two no we merge um e and f so this is let let this be e. and let this be f we merge the two such that no uh, repeating term is um, repeated. And then, of course, equate it to C because our general uh, uh, solution for exact is equal to C, right? So, um, equating, we have x cubed plus x squared y squared equals c so yeah that's our solution for this equation right so what can we notice well from the given problem it is evident that it is exact but um or that it is of the form that of uh, an exact differential but uh, the exact method is quite too tedious because it is long you have to test first if it is exact if it is not exact then we have to find the integrating factor so that we could now proceed to um, executing our exact solution or method for um, solving it via exact so medio tedious and medio mahaba but there is another way to solve this and yun nga, that is true bernoulli So here's a tip. Once you see a differential equation, take a look at its form. <clears throat> take a look at its form. So um, it can readily be seen, as I've mentioned already earlier, if that equation is separable, homogeneous, or linear, right? But it is. Um, it would um, entail us to do test for exactness to... For us to really know if it is exact or not, right? But um, it is quite easy to um, spot 
no? If the equation is nonlinear, and so if it is nonlinear, we can perhaps take a look and see if it is if it fits the Bernoulli equation form, right? So my recommendation is that you you make the exact um, solution be the last option, no? So after ex uh, after exhausting uh, all the methods available, you take a look at exact. But if it could be solved, no, by means of Bernoulli and or the other um, techniques, then by all means use it. Take exact as your last option. So, for example, in this exact in this um, equation, nga, no, uh, it can re be readily seen that it is of the exact differential form. But if we try and manipulate this, no. So by Bernoulli, we'll see that it actually is of the it, it actually um, can be or, or the form can conform <laughs> on the Bernoulli equation. So let's go ahead and try and form it uh, by means of Bernoulli. Madali naman kasi makita kung siya nga ay linear or nonlinear. We can see here na automatic na nonlinear siya because of y squared. No? So obviously, hindi na natin gagamitin yung linear. But we can check and see if it, if it can fit in sa Bernoulli. Ayun niya. So, we have 3x plus 2y squared dx. We can put um, 2xy dy on the other side. And um, put here negative 3x plus 2y squared dx. And then divide both sides by 2xy. No? And then dx as well. So, so that I could get an expression for dy over dx. dy over dx, and that is um, negative, no, or rather, sige, we have negative 3x minus 2y squared all over 2xy, right? 2xy. Now, we can divide this, and we'll get negative 3 over 2 over 2y and then we'll have um, 2 uh, rather y y over y over x right hmm okay so from the looks of it no we can actually transpose this yx to the other side and we're gonna get dy over dx plus y over x equals negative 3 over 2 y. Yeah. Now that we have um, manipulated the equation, you know, we can see here that if we take a look at the standard form, recall that the standard form for Bernoulli is dy over dx plus p of x y or equals q of x y raised to n. That's our Bernoulli form, right? So given our equation, it can easily be identified that dy over dx plus 1 over x y equals negative 3 over 2 y raised to negative 1. Now, we can now identify you know, that p of x here is actually 1 over x and q of x is actually negative 1.5, no? That's negative 3 over 2. 
and that n is negative 1, whereas 1 minus n is equal to 2. Yon. See how it fits Bernoulli? Now that we have these ingredients, we cannot proceed to getting the integrating factor. And that is mu of x equals e integral of 1 minus n p of x dx. Nakuha na si p of x. This is p of x. And this is 1 minus n. So plugging in all our values, we'll get e integral of 2 then p of x, which is 1 over x, and then dx. Ayan. We can simplify this, or we can factor out 2. It's a constant, siya, and we have dx over x, which we know is ln x. e raised to 2 ln x. By loss of logarithms, this will become e raised to ln x squared. We cancel out e and ln, so we have mu of x equals x squared. Alright. Now that we have our integrating factor, we move on to solving the equation. So the general solution has the form y raised to 1 minus n mu of x equals integral of mu of x, 1 minus n, and then q of x, dx plus c. Okay? So plugging in our values, we're going to get y raised to 1 minus n is 2, rather y squared or y raised to 2, y squared. And then mu of x, that's x squared, equals the, the integral of x squared. 1 minus n, that's 2. And then u of x, which is um, negative 1.5, right? Of course, dx. And then plus C. Yeah. So evaluating, you no. Know, 2 times negative 1.5 is actually 3. You can factor out 3. Negative 3. And then integrate x squared dx. This will give us negative 3 x cubed over 3. And then of course plus C. Okay. Now, uh, 3 cancels out. <laughs> Sorry. 3 cancels out. And now we have negative x cubed plus c. So bringing this down will give us x cubed or x squared y squared equals negative x cubed plus c. But transposing uh, this x cubed to the other side gives x squared y squared plus x cubed equals c. Yon. Which is also similar to sa nakuha nating sagot using the exact method. Right? But as you can see, it only took us three simple steps in solving this equation. Mas mabilis, right? And mass efficient. So yun yung advantages and disadvantages. Uh, that is why, to answer the question, ano, how do we pick or how do we choose the technique to use in solving the DE? It actually depends. The first thing you have to do, the first step is to look. <laughs> you have to really look at the form. Of course, uh, you have to um, uh, 
logically analyze if it is um, separable, homogeneous, if it is linear. If it is not linear, then of course you could choose Bernoulli or exact. So if I will be asked what will be the what is my if I will be asked no kung, um, what will be the method you're going to use, I will first check if it is separable. Next I will check if it is homogeneous. Next I will check if it is linear. And then next I will check if it is Bernoulli. And then lastly yung exact. All right. So let's move on to another problem. We have example number six. Solve the DEY prime plus Y cotangent X plus Y to the four fourth power sine X. So solution. Okay, clearly this is nonlinear, so Bernoulli is a uh, top uh, choice for solution. This is dy over dx. Of course, the first step is to um, check to see if it, it can be transformed to the standard form, which is dy over dx plus p of x y equals q of x y raised to n. So our given equation is dy over dx. dy over dx plus cotangent x or y cotangent x. Yes. Cotangent x and y equals sine x and then y raised to 4. And it can now be identified that p of x here is cotangent x and that q of x here is sine x, right? Where n is 4. And 1 minus n is negative 3, right? So next is we get the, we calculate, we compute for the integrating factor. And that is mu of x equals e raised to the integral of 1 minus n p of x dx. Okay, so computing. Meron tayong e raised to the integral of 1 minus n, and that is negative 3. And then p of x, which is cotangent x, then dx. All right. We can factor out um, negative 3 here to get e raised to negative 3, the integral of cotangent x d x. Now, how do we integrate cotangent? Recall that cotangent whoops recall that cotangent x is actually equivalent to cosine x over sine x. So if we integrate integral of cotangent x is dx is actually equivalent to the integral of cosine x over sine x dx. Now if we let u, you no, know, u be equal to sine x du is equal to cosine x dx. In other words, we have here the integral of du over u, which is equivalent to ln u, which is sine x. 
Yon. Right? And so, what happens to our integrating factor? We have E raised to negative 3 ln sin x. Yon. So, dito yung galing. Okay. Further simplifying, this can actually be um, computed as um, E raised to ln sine x raised to negative 3. So, in other words, mu. mu of x equal to sine x raised to negative 3. Because e raised to ln simply um, cancels out. So we have sine x raised to negative 3. Okay. That is our integrating factor. Now that we have our integrating factor, we can move on to, yes, computing our general solution. So the general solution has a form of y raised to 1 minus n mu of x equals the integral of um, mu of x 1 minus n q of x dx, and then of course, plus c. So, substituting, we have y raised to, uh, what is our 1 minus n? It's actually negative 3, right? Yes, it's negative 3. Our mu of x, kakakuha lang natin kanina, that's sine x raised to negative 3 equals the integral of the same, which is sine x raised to negative 3 times negative 3, that is 1 minus n, and then q of x, which is actually what? Sine x. That's sine x, right? Yeah. Of course, dx, and then plus c. So let's evaluate our integral. We can factor out negative 3. And we have sine x raised to negative 3 multiplied by sine x dx, and then plus c. So since we sine ng base, both sine x, so this, this will be um, negative 3 plus 1. So that would be 3 integral of sine x raised to negative 2. Right? Of course, dx plus c. Now, we know that this is, ah, sige, lagi ko na rin, ano, para maliwanag. This will be um, negative 3 before we evaluate, no? Uh, this is actually equivalent to 1 over sine x raised to 2. Sine x raised to 2. So in other words, this will be negative 3. We know from our trigonometric identity that 1 over sine Right? 1 over sine is 1 over sine is cosecant. Right? So we can convert this actually to cosecant. So cosecant squared x 
and then of course dx. Now, we know that the integral of cosecant squared x is actually negative cotangent x, right? So this becomes negative 3 and then cotangent x. The way I remembered it is this uh, through this method. No, kayo how I remember this cosecant. Okay, so I write down secant, secant, and then tangent. Actually, nakuha ko to sa isang YouTube tutorial. And I find this very helpful in remembering the identities. Cosecant, then negative cosecant, and then cotangent. As you will recall, ito yung mga reciprocals lang nila. So with arrow going here, and then arrow going here, arrow going here, and then arrow going here. It speaks of the differentiation or derivative um, identity, or the, uh, yes, the derivatives of the equivalents of these um, trigonometric identities. For example, we have, if we want to uh, see what is the derivative of secant, that is d over dx ng secant, we have to look at this arrow. So, papunta siya doon, so ibig sabihin secant and tangent yon. Yon, secant x, tangent x. Right? Now, kung derivative naman with respect to x, of course, ng tangent, we have to look at this arrow. So, pupunta siya doon. So, secant and secant is secant squared. x, tama. So, how about this one? Similar, if you want to look at the derivative with respect to x of... Um, Cosecant, that's actually from this cosecant, no? Yung derivative niya is pointing towards this arrow. So that's actually negative cosecant cotangent. Right? Now, paano naman yung derivative ng cotangent? So, pupunta yun dito, edi negative cosecant squared x. Yan. So, doon ko nakuha to. Paano? Paano mo nalaman yung integral? Paano mo sir nalaman yung equivalent integral niyan? Well, since alam ko na d over dx yan, I can actually integrate that. So, meron akong d over dx cotangent, diba? So, this becomes d cotangent syempre x angle equals negative cosecant squared x dx and then I integrate. No? In other words, cotangent x. In other words, the integral of negative cosecant or rather the integral ng cosecant squared x ay negative cotangent x. Yan. That is why this one should actually be negative cotangent. Negative cotangent x. Yan. Of course, plus c. Okay. So, bringing this down, this y squared down, no? y negative 3 sine x. Meron akong, yeah, y is negative 3 multiplied by sine same lang din siya sa ganito so yeah, equals 3 negative 3 so further simplifying I'll get um, 3 cotangent x plus c with y cubed negative 3 pala sorry sine raised to negative 3 and then x you can further simplify this no and make it um, y in terms of y and that is y raised to negative 3 equals um, 3 
cotangent x plus c multiplied by sine cubed x. Paano nangyari yun? Kasi dinivide ko itong sine raised to negative 3x both sides. Kaya itong negative 3 naging positive. Nagdating dito sa kabila. So that's it. That's our solution for this. Well, actually, you can further simplify this pa, no? You can multiply y4. <laughs> Sige, gawin natin. Y raised to 4. Y raised to 4. Sorry, y equals yan. cotangent x plus c multiplied by y raised to 4 sine cubed x. So yeah, inartihan lang naman natin, but actually yung taas pwede na yan. No? As simple as that. So if you want uh, an expression in terms of y with an order of 1, then yan. On the left hand side, expressed explicitly, then this is a good um, expression for it. Okay? So... We move on to our last example. Example number seven. You have this differential equation. Let's solve this. So solution. So we have dy over dx plus one half tangent xy equals quantity four x plus five squared over two cosine x and then y cubed. You can identify na hindi nga siya linear because of y cubed, no? Because of y cubed. And so it's a potential candidate for Bernoulli. Well, very obvious naman since yun yung ating topic. We're all gonna solve this by means of Bernoulli. But in the case yeah, that you're given an DE with no direction how to solve it, you look if it is linear or not. If it is linear, then use linear. If it is not, then perhaps you could transform it to fit Bernoulli. So this one, we have dy, dy over dx plus 1 half tangent x. We can see here that um, it's already you know, on its standard form. So the first step, of course, is to look at it if it conforms to the standard form, and that is dy over dx plus p of xy equals q of x y raised to n. Ayun. So we have dy over dx plus hmm, we have here one half tangent x and then y equals yun, 4x plus 5 raised to 2 all over 2 cosine x and then of course y cubed we can now identify, you know, what is p of x. It is clearly one half tangent x, and that q of x is actually equal to ayon, tung nasa taas mismo, four x plus five over two cosine x. Yon. We can further identify y in that, I'm sorry, n, and that is 3, whereas 1 minus n is equal to 1 minus 3, negative 2. Proceeding with the integrating factor, which is mu of x equals e raised to the integral of mm, 1 minus n, p of x dx you can actually get um, e is the integral of 1 minus n is negative 2 p of x is 1 half tangent x dx so this becomes 2 cancels out I'm sorry um, 2 and 2 here comes 1. 
So we have e raised to the integral of negative tangent x and then dx, right? But recall again, the same manner we did with tangent or whole tangent, we have tangent x is equal to sine x over cosine x. So this can be transformed to, or this is equivalent to, e raised to the negative right e raised to negative integral of sine x over cosine x of course dx so you can actually let u be equal to um cosine x and du be equal to derivative of cosine x and negative sine x right this will become e negative integral of du over u right and this becomes positive because of negative here. We have integral of ln or d over u, which is sine x. I'm sorry. d over u, which is e raised to ln u. In this case, we have u to be e raised to ln u which is cosine x right finally cosine x because e and ln cancels out so that's our integrating factor cosine x now we proceed next to Getting the general solution, which is of the form y raised to 1 minus n, and then mu of x was the integral of mu of x, 1 minus n, q of x, dx, and then plus c. So we have y raised to 1 minus n, which is negative 2. So that's y, negative 2, and then mu of x, which is cosine x, equals the integral of cosine x, and then 1 minus n, which is negative 2 again, and then q of x, which is what? 4, x plus 5 squared all over cosine 2 cosine x. Yeah. Now we can see here that cosine and 2 cancels out. Cosine x, cosine x, and then 2, and then 2. So we have, we're left with negative integral of 4x plus 5 raised to 2 dx plus c okay of course this is dx and then plus c <laughs> now how do we integrate this one chain rule how do we integrate this one chain rule so negative what's the um if we let u to be so lang natin to be done no? para mas may space style if we let u to be equal to 4x plus 5 right du will be 4 dx 
Tama ba? And so we need to insert 4. Or rather, actually this becomes no eh. dx plus du over 4. Right? The chain rule. We have, we need to insert 4. So that's 1 fourth. And then this becomes 4x plus 5 all over, actually raised to 3. Over 3. Yeah, and then plus C. Yon. So this becomes um, bringing this down gives us y negative 2 cosine x equals um, distributing will get negative 1 over 12. Yeah. 4x plus 5 raised to 3 plus c. Okay. Can arrange this a bit. No, so it looks pretty. <laughs> so this will become um, y. Equals. Negative 1 over 12, 4x plus 5 raised to 3 plus c, and then y cubed cosine x raised to negative 1. And that's it. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is our solution okay. to the problem. All right, that ends our examples. Thanks for watching. Here's our problem set eight for um, this um, topic, lesson eight. Again, thanks for watching. Let's pray the Lasallian prayer. I will continue, oh my God, to do all my actions for the love of me. Saint John Baptist de La Salle, pray for us. Leave Jesus in our hearts forever. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.